Welcome to my Sterling single, part 51. In a previous episode, I had to destroy the water inlet tap from the injector adapter, and a replacement was extremely difficult to fit and took a while to complete. In this episode, I am also working on the damaged paintwork. The problem is getting the adapter to line up with the check valve, so I can refit the union nut without cross-threading it. When I first fitted the injector double adapter, it was easy because the whistle wasn't in the way. This part is very heavily edited because most of the time all you can see is the backs of my hands. I tried a couple of screwdrivers to hold the part, I tried a pair of pliers to hold the part, and none of this was successful. I used one screwdriver to hold the pipe in the right position, and then another one to rotate the nut, but really I needed a third hand. To be honest, this really did tax my patience, and generally speaking, I have a lot of that, and whatever I do in life, I do not give in easily. Finally, believe it or not, after half an hour, I persuaded the nut and the pipe to be in the right place so I could tighten the nut onto the check valve. And finally, the job was done. I haven't removed the ball from the check valve. I'm going to leave it in place and see whether the injectors lift two balls. Pardon the expression. With the engine in steam, when I test the injectors, if they don't work, I will remove the ball from the check valve that screws into the boiler. Here, I'm repiping the injector because I had to remove the pipe just to get it out of the way. And the first thing to do is to take off the union nut that I fitted at the end of the injector so I didn't lose the cone. This job was simple enough, there was plenty of flexibility in the piping, which allowed me to align the union nut with the thread on the injector, and here I'm tightening it first by hand, and then, using a spanner, I tighten it thoroughly. I always try never to work on 3.5 inch gauge engines, because the parts in them are really too small for me these days, and everything on a 3.5 inch gauge engine to me appears difficult. However, this is a 5-inch gauge engine, and most of it is OK, but some of the parts are very fiddly. Fitting the brakes is going to be fun. Even though the brakes and their complicated linkages on this engine are not going to be functional, they do at least need to be fitted, just so it looks good. Back to repairing the paintwork. I didn't show this, but after I rubbed down the etching primer, I brush painted some Great Northern Railway green onto the damaged area. And here I'm rubbing down the green paint with some 600 grade wet or dry sandpaper and as you can see I'm using it wet and I'm not putting a lot of pressure on, I don't want to go through it too much onto the metal underneath. Making this video has been difficult, I had to go for a blood test this morning at the local medical centre. And I was shooting some of this video just before I left for the blood test and some when I came back. The two ladies at the medical centre had difficulty locating the vein in my left arm, and I thought it was a good idea to mention that my blood pressure is always low, which is a good thing, I'm not complaining. A lot of people my age are on blood pressure tablets, but that's not something that I need. I am actually going to respray this wrapper, so I need to rub down quite a lot of it to key it for the next coat of paint. I've already videoed the initial paint job on the wrapper, so I may not bother with this next coat because you've seen it already once if you've watched the series. And also, to be perfectly honest, some of the jobs that I do are difficult to video when I'm the only person there videoing it. Here's a shot of the tender. Just look at the riveting. I've never seen riveting quite as good as the riveting on this tender. And that's the reason why I don't want to paint the main body of the tender. I like it like this. Changing the subject for a moment, here is a funnel. I bought this at the supermarket yesterday. I'm going to modify it so I can fill boilers with it. It's got quite a large funnel area, which will make it easier and simpler to fill any boiler that I'm about to test. I'm going to cut off the parallel part with the groove in it and fit my own extension that will fit into the top of a boiler. Very shortly, I'm going to descale this boiler. What I will do is fill the boiler with hot water and then add some Kill Rock K and shake it up a bit. 
Thankfully, living on my own, I should be able to do this without anybody moaning over the kitchen sink, which is right next to the smaller workshop built onto the house. In the next episode, I'll be fitting the handles to the injector water valves. Before I can do this, though, I need to make sure which way round they are. I mounted them in position a long time ago. I'm going to fit them using Loctite 603, and that will be in the next episode. For now, though, I'm going to quickly have another look at the riveting on the tender body. And OK, two of the rivets that hold the top rails are not exactly in the middle. But look at the riveting on the body of the tender. This is surreal. I cannot do this. I've tried, but I can never get them level. I've put the tender on the side to have a look underneath because, to be honest, it's such a long while since I fitted this array of piping. I'm just checking how I did it. And that is it for this episode. It's time for me to go. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.